Have you ever thought about what would happen to your children and to your family finances if you should pass away unexpectedly? I've had a few situations come up with friends in the past few weeks that has really made me be thinking about this for me and my family. And so today I want to share a few quick tips with you. I'm not a lawyer, so I'll preface with that. A few tips on how you can be a little bit more prepared to give you some peace of mind so you don't have to be worried about what will happen if you are not there to take care of things. So if you don't know me, I'm Jody. I'm from the blog Food Storage Made Easy, and I strive to help busy families, busy moms prepare for emergencies, uh, big or small, without having to be overwhelmed and feel like you have to be a major hardcore prepper. Like we can prepare without having a huge bunker in our basement. So that is what I do. And like I said, today we are going to talk about estate planning, end of life planning. And especially if you have young children, but for anybody, this is really important. So there's three main components we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about um, a living will with power of attorneys. So to take care of things while if you're still alive, uh, then we'll talk about a, a will. And we'll also talk about trust. So let's talk about living wills real quick. So if you should become incapacitated, um, either medically or mentally, then then what will happen? So who who takes care of your affairs? So there are um, different recommendations. So a living will, the main idea with that is that you decide if you want to stay on life support or not. And that kind of helps alleviate things from your loved ones having to make those hard decisions. And so you can direct what you want to do with that. But a lot of willing will, living wills don't specify a health care power of attorney. So they may be able to help, you know, it may outline your decisions, but it doesn't give somebody the specific power to to decide things for you. So you want to make sure your living will includes a health care power of attorney um, and have that that option for them so they can make kind of major medical decisions for you. And that would be um, more of a permanent type of situation instead of just a temporary. And then also another power of attorney you would need is a financial power of attorney. So who can write your bills and pay checks and take care, make financial decisions for you and maybe for your children should something happen to you that you can't do that on your own. So those are two very important things to have outlined um, and they could be really important for you to have for adult children as well. If um, one of your adult children, something should happen to them if you want to avoid them having to have like guardianship hearings and all of that, just have it outlined. So even if you don't have children, just if you're an over 18, you know, have that in place, who will look after you if something should happen to you. And so that's a really good thing you can do for your children when they turn 18 and set that up for them. So now let's talk about uh, wills. So wills are typically to establish guardianship for children as well as, um, where your assets are going to go and um, and an executor for your estate. And so for me, I have a blended family and my children, um, their dad can't take care of them full time. He's a pilot. And so if something were to happen to me, I really have to, to it's, this gives me a lot of anxiety. Okay. If something were to happen to me. I don't know. So this is a big conversation that we have to have between my current husband, between my parents, between my ex-husband's parents, between my, my ex-husband, you know, like what's going to happen to these children and who's going to take care of them because it's not as simple as, well, they'll just go live with their dad if something happened to me. Or what if you're married and something happens to both of you? H have that conversation. That's a hard conversation. But do you want the courts to decide who's going to take care of your kids or do you want to decide? And so that's, that's really the, probably the most important thing to be part of your will. And then in terms of assets, like you're going to want to lay out your assets and who gets them. And that'll again, avoid like courts deciding that kind of thing. And I'm an executor. So I don't know if you've ever seen situations with families where people get into big fights. I mean, I've seen it tear families apart, um, fighting over assets. And that's just something you, you can leave for your family, a blessing of not having to <laughs> have fights like that. Now, a will is good, but a trust is better. And there are some reasons you probably want to have both. 
Um, but a trust basically can help avoid some of that probate. I think it can help avoid some taxes. Like again, I'm not a lawyer. These are just things that I've learned and researched for myself. So um, if you have a trust, you put all of your assets in the trust and then you establish like a leader of this trust and they're the ones who get to decide how to do all of this and it doesn't even have to go through the courts for your estate. And um, I believe it can reduce a little bit of inheritance tax if both you and your spouse um, have all your assets in the trust. I think it also helps with um, like if one spouse dies first, then the other spouse still has access to all of those assets until something should happen to them. And I, I believe it just outlines things a lot better, protects things and makes it much easier um, where your trust, you know, your trustee has control over these things instead of the state getting control of your assets and then distributing it as they see fit. So that's kind of a rough and dirty. There is so much more that you can research on this and there are some things you can do online for free. Like and depending on the state you live in, you can do a basic will and just have it signed. Sometimes you'll have to have it notarized and that's that's good enough for the, the basics. Um, but if you want it to be a little bit more, you know, if you want to have it reviewed by a lawyer, there are some plans like you can do legal zoom and I think you can get all three of those, the will, the living will, and the, um, a trust set up for like under 500 bucks. But if you want to go to like an actual firm, sometimes you're looking more in the like 1000 to $1,500 price range. So if you have a lot of assets or a really complex situation, like I have with, you know, a blended family is going to be a little bit tricky no matter what. And so, um, you definitely might want to look into that. I have a few resources. I have some people I can point you to the right direction of people that I use if you want. So if you're interested in that, hit me up. But regardless, don't let it overwhelm you. Just do something. If all it is, is going online and filling out a free will template and putting it somewhere, go and do that today. It's something you can do in 15 minutes. Um, but I would recommend like consulting with a lawyer and kind of doing one of those, or even legal zoom. I think it's like 29 or 39 bucks for just a simple will, but that has been um, approved by a lawyer. So definitely do something like that. And uh, let me know if you do, and let me know if this was helpful for you. And as always, you can subscribe, hit that, click the little bell so you get notification of new videos and come follow me on foodstoragemadeeasy.net.